where I'm from, like, football is a way of life. It's like the culture. There wasn't basketball, there wasn't soccer, there wasn't baseball. So I can't even remember not having a football or not being a part of the game. It's like it's a part of my DNA. I remember taking a flight from Denver to Atlanta and I had my Bible and uh, I guess I was trying to read it, you know, and there was this lady, she said, are you a Christian? Why would she ask this? Like, isn't it obvious? But the way she asked in her facial expression made me really dig a little deeper. She saw, you know, how hesitant I was and she said, you know what, just pray for clarity. So for four years, I began to pray for clarity every single day. I was in the most dysfunctional relationship, dysfunctional marriage ever. Uh, it was horrible. You have two people who really love each other but couldn't get it right. And uh, my wife, you know, she just wasn't happy. I just thought a man was supposed to just provide. You know, I looked around and said, you have a beautiful house, you have a roof over your head. You know, we can do anything we want when we want to do it. You know, why aren't you happy? We have money in our bank account. And I just couldn't get it. I thought that's what a man was. One day, my wife came home. She said, I'm going to church. And she's like, do you want to go? I said, no. So for a whole year, my wife would go to church with a friend. And I, w I was so bitter. I was like, who is this person you're going to church with? You know, she doesn't know us. You know, you, you're letting people in her business. That's how bitter I was. My wife was trying to do something really positive and change things for herself and, and, and us. And I'm sitting here worried about who she's going to church with. And I dove into the Word. I was relentless in my praying. I was relentless in, in my meditating on the Word. At that moment, you know, I had friends come around and say, hey, you need to really sit down and talk to someone. You know, and I found myself at McLean Hospital for three months, away from my wife, away from my home. I took something up there to Boston, to Waltham, Massachusetts, that I don't think anyone else in those groups took with them. And that was Jesus Christ. Every single day, every single night, I got on my knees. And I just uh, begged God for him to give me clarity. The same prayer. After a month and a half being up there, you know, it was like, man, I'm feeling something I never felt before. God's revealing himself to me in, in ways he never, you know, revealed himself to me. I remember having worship in my car by myself, listening to praise music. It was like, this is amazing. Like, I'm driving down the highway with my hands up like, what is this that I'm feeling? Like, I've been praying clarity for four years. I've been praying for the cycle to be broken for four years, and it's happened. She came over to tell me that she wasn't coming home. We never even got to that part of it. We just started talking and expressing ourselves and praying. She just felt something. She was like, this is a different man. And uh, months later, that's when she found told me, she was like, I really was there to tell you that, you know, I wasn't coming home. You know, so I'm just so thankful that I had a praying wife because I don't know where I would be. I was able to call my father and say, man, Dad, you know, man, we're in this cycle, but this is how we can fix it. A year later, he, he ended up giving his life to Christ. My brother gave his life to Christ. My mother gave her life to Christ. My sister gave her life to Christ. We're stuck in this cycle, but we're stuck in a cycle because we don't understand the root of it. For us, we figured out what the root of it was, and that was the absence of Jesus in our, in our homes, and now he's the center of everything that we do.